Shalom, welcome to this week's Devar Torah. This week's Sejra is Sejra's Chayit Sara. It's an exciting Sejra with a lot of details. This Shabbos, take out your, your Chumash, go through the Sejra and really understand it. It starts off with the passing of Sara, unfortunately, but goes on to describe the next matriarch, Rivka, who comes along and takes Sara's spot. We find something strange in the beginning of the Parsha. When Avram Avinu go, properly eulogizes and cries over the passing of his wife, Sara, he goes out himself and buys a burial plot. He does the bargaining, he does the searching, the real estate search, everything he does on his own. Now this might not seem strange. After all, it was his wife, so of course he's going to go out and get a burial plot. What strikes me as odd is that he doesn't appoint somebody to do it for him. He doesn't have a representative do the groundwork, the legwork. Why is that so strange? If we look later in the Sedra, Yitzchak, his son, the next leader of the Jewish people, needs a wife. This, is, this woman is going to play an important role in the furthering of Avram's movement to monotheism. Instead of Avram going out himself and picking out this girl, he appoints a messenger, his servant Eliezer, to go ahead and do this. Eliezer was somebody, our rabbis tell us, that Avram didn't trust that much on his own. Yet for this all-important mission, Avram picks a representative. If for this all-important mission, mission he picks a representative, shouldn't he not have himself spent the time trying to find a burial, for, a burial spot for his wife? Wouldn't it have made much more sense for him, for, for him to appoint a servant to go ahead and find essentially a cave for Sarah to be buried in? Why did Avram himself, personally, go out and buy a burial spot for Sarah, find it and do all the groundwork and all the legwork himself? To provide and to protect, it seems like a logo for a, on a police car that we find as the car drives by, police, Los Angeles County, to provide and to protect. Really, it's much more than that. It's the responsibility that every husband has, as written in his ksuba that he gives to his wife under the chuppah. To provide and protect is our responsibility as husbands for our wives. This responsibility of providing and protecting goes way past life and even enters into, unfortunately, those times where the husband outlives his wife. The idea of providing continues even post-mortem, as it's the husband's responsibility, again, as written in the tzuvah, to provide a proper mechubad, an honorable burial spot and burial process for his wife. The idea being that love and respect isn't just a feeling. The idea behind the tzuvah, behind showing proper respect to one's wife even after they've passed, is, re is understanding how great they are, understanding the responsibility one has to their wife. That goes way past living. That respect goes on forever and ever. That's an eternal respect. That example we learned from Avram this week. Avram understood that even though Sarah had passed on, he still owed a measure of respect. He had that obligation to provide and to protect his wife Sarah. That's why he himself goes out and doesn't appoint a representative for seemingly the mundane task of the legwork of finding a burial spot for his wife. It's an important lesson for all of us husbands out there. All of us who have to understand how much respect we really do over our wives. And if we owe that much respect after they've passed on, how much more respect we should be showing while they're still alive. Have a great Shabbat. Shalom.